Hey, welcome back to Guitar Discoveries. So this is Mojo. He's a three-year-old rescue dog, Black Lab mix, who already had some history and mystery in his background when we adopted him about 10 weeks ago. So it occurred to me that my experience with Mojo has been a lot like my experience making music. You know, alternately joyful, surprising, challenging, emotional. I mean, he's taught me some big lessons. So. If you're wondering what Mojo the dog has to do with your Mojo on guitar, stick around. It's time for Mojo's top three guitar lessons. So Mojo is a people dog. My wife Bara and I were smitten right away. And he got along well with our son Eli. He loved our daughter Avalon. So our first 10 days with him were happy, full of promise. But one day, for no obvious reason, he had a territorial moment and he lunged at our son Eli, snapping and growling. Luckily he didn't bite, but his intensity came out of the blue. It scared the heck out of all of us. And our first instinct was, let's call the shelter and bring him back. But we'd already gotten attached. You know, he'd been so awesome in every other way, and this attack seemed really out of character. So we decided, let's give him a second chance. We called a trainer, you know, to get a pro's help, and we wanted to learn, you know, were there some training and desensitizing techniques that might help. So we introduced more training and discipline, and Mojo improved in a lot of ways, you know? We used commands and treats to train him not to pull on his leash or to overreact to cats and mailmen. And actually within a few days, he could take whole walks with the leash loose, most of the time at least. Pretty impressive. So that's Mojo's guitar lesson number one. When you encounter a challenge, don't give up, commit to training. Training a dog not to overreact to people and animals in their environment is just like training your hands. So no matter what's happening musically around you, you can stay calm and centered and play what you hear in your head. And you accomplish that by doing guitar exercises. You know, it's usually chord changes. Or scales, you know? And you're gonna practice them over and over until they're just completely second nature, until you don't even have to think to make your fingers behave the way you want. So after Mojo got territorial with Eli, our priority was to keep them separated and safe while we figured out how and even if we could modify Mojo's behavior. We kept the dog upstairs by rigging a guitar case at the top of the inside stairs. And then we put a metal chaise at the top of the outside stairs and we put up a gate to the dining room so Mojo couldn't hassle Eli when he was in the kitchen. So these were intended to be temporary workarounds, you know, just to keep things livable and safe while we trained Mojo to be less reactive. And that leads to Mojo's guitar lesson number two. Use workarounds, but don't get dependent on them. So we spent eight weeks climbing over the guitar case, moving the heavy chaise a few times a day, and being super vigilant about keeping the dining room gate closed. And by that time, you know, we weren't even aware of all the ways we'd change the environment and our routines to avoid a clash between Mojo and our son. And the same thing can happen to you on the guitar. You know, while you're learning, you'll sometimes use a workaround to solve a problem or compensate for some specific skill you lack, like uh, playing rhythm guitar, you know? It, if it's too hard for your hand to form a certain whole chord, you might drop certain notes of the chord and you can get away with it. So like bar chords are a great example. You don't have to put your index finger all the way across. You can just put it on the first two strings and it still plays the right chord and sounds fine, just not quite as full. Or you can do a power chord using just the bottom strings that allows you to keep your finger curved and more relaxed. So you use workarounds like this to play through your current temporary limitations, but then it's easy to get complacent. You know, you have to keep reminding yourself to practice the full chords. So eventually you can choose which version of the chord to use for each musical situation. You want to use that, you want to use that, you want to use this. 
So for lead guitar, workarounds can pretty quickly turn into ruts, and then the ruts can prevent you from progressing and expressing yourself to the max. In my case, there was this lead pattern that I learned decades ago. It sounds like this. Now that lick is still a crutch for me. And you know, because it's so ingrained, sometimes it stops me from moving around the fretboard and taking more risks because I don't want to look bad or play wrong notes. And that's not good because I should be taking risks and playing music from my soul, not my ego. So about a month into Mojo's training, things were going really well. He and Eli were able to take walks together. Eli was giving him these high value meat treats like hot dogs and things were looking up, you know? And then something unexpected happened in our neighborhood. It was right around Memorial Day. People started lighting off fireworks every night and it just scared the bejesus out of Mojo. I mean, it would actually paralyze him. He would cower in the corner and he'd start to shake uncontrollably. Then we went all in on trying to calm him down. We got we did crate training, we got a calming collar, hemp drops, we bought a thunder vest. The thing that actually helped him the most was something called Rescue Remedy, and that stopped the shaking, which was really good. But, but nothing we tried could totally eliminate his fear. And the more intense the fireworks got as we approached July 4th, the more Mojo was stressed. He wouldn't even go outside after dark. And then his fear overflowed into those other areas where we'd been making progress. He got more reactive and more afraid of Eli again until one night Eli had just walked into the kitchen and Mojo rushed the gate to go after him, barking and snarling back to square one. And that's when we knew we, we had to admit to ourselves that living with us wasn't workable for Mojo in the long run. You know, Eli was still triggering him after two solid months of training and desensitizing. And here's the thing. We loved Mojo and we totally felt like failures because despite all the effort, the lifestyle changes, the training, we could not train away his instinctive fear. So even though it was going to rip out our hearts, he needed to go back to the sanctuary. We had to let him go so ultimately he can find the perfect home. Quieter place, more freedom, less environmental stress, and a single person or a couple without kids. Which leads to Mojo's guitar lesson number three. Go all in, discover your limits, and forgive yourself. When it comes to your long-term relationship with the guitar, I do encourage you to go all in. Keep playing and pushing yourself all the way to your physical and musical limits. Could take years, but do understand that no matter how much practice and how much devotion you put in, you're only human. You know, there will be things you physically and musically can't do. And that's when it's time to go easy and forgive yourself. So back in the 70s, my favorite guitar LP was from a classical guitarist named Christopher Parkening. Parkening plays Bach. Amazing album. I loved it so much that I actually spent a few years trying to learn guitar masterworks and become a legit classical guitarist. And that led me to some major heartbreak and soul searching because no matter how hard I tried, how many hours I put in, I simply could not develop that finger dexterity that I'd need to play the classics the way I heard them in my head and the way parkening made it sound easy to do. So I put in these years of intense practice, ultimately to find out that classical guitar and being an instrumental player only would never be the right fit for me. I needed to play guitar and sing. I needed to write songs. I needed to record and produce music. Those were my real talents, not limiting myself to one genre that would require all my time and discipline. I love all styles of music. I'm a natural genre bender, but I I'd had to go all in on classical to discover that about myself. And that's just like we had to go all in with Mojo to know for sure that our home wasn't the best place for him. And that leads to Mojo's bonus lesson find the right home, your musical sweet spot. So, you know, do we regret going all in with Mojo? No way. I mean, you know the quote, 
Tis better to have loved and lost than never to have loved and all. That's Tennyson. That sums up our relationship with Mojo. Because so when you're musical life, you're going to have to commit completely, you know, risk your time, your energy, your effort to discover your limits. And sometimes a really long and challenging musical journey will lead you right back where you started, but with a higher perspective. And that's going to infuse your music with new depth and purpose. You know, it makes it all three dimensional. All right. That's it for today. I hope these lessons from Mojo the Dog can help you find your mojo on guitar. Okay, this is normally when I ask you to subscribe and visit my website, but instead I want to show you where Mojo came from. The Milo Foundation. They save the lives of about 2,000 animals every year. They have a shelter in Richmond, California, and a sanctuary in Mendocino County. Now, Mojo came from the sanctuary, which usually hosts about 200 animals, many with unique challenges. So I want to give a big shout out to Milo founder Lynn Tingle, the wonderful Earl who took Mojo back in when we were just emotionally wrecked, uh, to Eric, Carol, Amy, and the other staff and volunteers who give all these animals the chance for a better life and hopefully to get adopted and find the perfect forever home. The Milo Foundation needs your support because they're facing huge financial challenges during the COVID crisis. So please, if you have the means, go to the link right in the description, meet the animals, and consider making a donation or sponsoring an animal. Uh, we're going to sponsor Mojo as long as he's there, and your generosity would not only mean the world to me, it would mean it to all those innocent dogs, cats, and other animals who need your help. So thank you so much. See you next time.